Hi yogis, this is Kathy and I'm going to be going through yin yoga for you. If you've never taken a yin yoga class, it's important for you to know the tools you'll need. You'll want to either grab a yoga block or if you don't have one, grab a couple of stackable books. You're going to need a belt. I have a yoga belt. You can also use any belt from your closet. And lastly, you'll need a bolster pillow or just a pillow off of your bed. You'll need a mat and some comfortable clothes. And you'll also most importantly need a timer, either your watch or anything that will keep time. You're gonna be holding each one of the poses I demonstrate for you in the next few videos for five minutes each. To start our practice, we're gonna make our way into child's pose. So you'll bring your knees up to the width of your mat, your big toes together till they touch, and your sitting bones coming as close as you can to your heels. If your knees joint compromised, you can always place a block or your books underneath. I'm gonna have you grab either your bolster or your pillow off your bed and place it right in between your legs and go ahead and recline down, bringing your chest onto the bolster. You may need one or two pillows. Reach the fingertips toward the top of the mat and lower yourself down, relaxing into the pose, breathing calmly, inhaling through your nose and exhaling out your nose or mouth. Our next pose is hero's pose. You're welcome to place a block or a couple of books underneath your sitting bones. Your knees are spaced hip width apart. For those of you who have a couple of bolsters or pillows, you're welcome to sit on those as well. Or some of you coming straight down with your sitting bones on your heels. If you're more flexible, you can widen your stance so your sitting bones come down onto the earth. Taking a breath in, bring your arms out nice and wide, gaze up, cross your right arm under your left, wrap your arms around, press your palms together, and lift your elbows up chin height. You'll hold this pose for three minutes with the right arm under the left, and then release three minutes with the left arm under the right. Make your way into downward facing dog and pedal out your dog to allow blood flow up and down your legs. Lower your armpits and your chest closer to the mat. We'll take a few breaths here. Take a breath in as you lift up on the balls of the feet and exhale as you press the heels back. One more time, lift up, exhale and press back. We're gonna walk our feet slowly up toward our hands. Keep your feet spaced apart, two hip widths. Grab opposite elbows and allow the crown of your head to dangle toward the floor, rag down, five minutes. Heel toe your feet out and widen your stance. Allow your hands to come down to the mat and slowly bend your sitting bones down as you come into Malasana pose. Many of you may need a block or a couple of blocks to support underneath your tailbone. Sinking your sitting bones down, place your elbows on the insides of your knees with your thumb knuckles at your heart Allow your chest to open and lift. For those of you who want a little more intensity, I invite you to bring your block between your hands, which will encourage a little more opening through your hips. Hold for five minutes. Slowly bring yourself out of Malasana and bring your legs nice and long in front of you. I invite you to bring a block 
or a bolster, couple of pillows under your knee pit. Keep your legs extended out and my heels are just resting on the earth. Allow your rib cage to lift up away from your lower back as you breathe in, lift nice and tall. As you exhale, slowly fold forward into caterpillar pose, reaching your hands beyond your feet. If you can't quite reach beyond your feet, you're welcome to bring your strap and place it around the sole of your foot to help encourage the flexion of your toes toward the crown of your head. Set your timer for four minutes. Make your way back into downward facing dog. Make sure your bolster or pillows are placed at the top of your mat. On your in breath, raise your right leg. Bend your knee and roll open, stack your hips. Allow a big breath in, your toe reaches up toward the sky, and bring your right knee to your right wrist, your right ankle to your left wrist, and try to square your shin as much as you can with the top of the mat. We're coming into half swan. Slowly coming down, you can utilize your bolster or your pillow. If you don't have a bolster, you can come down on your forearms, or for some of you, you'll want to recline all the way down to the mat. Come up to tall arms, tuck your toes, and press back into downward facing dog. Setting up for side B, inhale, the left leg lifts, bend your knee and roll it open. Allow a big breath in, toe to the sky, and bring your left knee to your left wrist left ankle to the right wrist. We're holding each one of these half swans for five minutes. Bringing yourself down either on your bolster or forearms or the floor. Let's rise up to tall arms. Tuck your toes on the right and press back into downward facing dog. From here, bring your knees down. We'll set up for our next pose, which is Supta Baddha Konasana. With a bolster or pillows running right down your spine. You can opt not to use a bolster. Bring the soles of your feet together till they touch. Some of you may even want to bring your books or a block underneath the top of the bolster. It'll lift your head just a little bit higher. Recline yourself back and use the bolster to open your chest and lift your heart. Close your eyes and allow yourself to remain still and quiet. Just breathe. Slowly open up your eyelids and bring yourself up off of your mat. We're going to remove the bolster and block. Draw your knees together. Hold on to your shins and round down slowly one vertebrae at a time. Allow your legs to come long on the mat. And bring your heels out wider than your mat. Allow your toes to splay out. Palms come out overhead. Palms facing up. Close your eyes. And remain in your Shavasana, your final resting pose. Just 